Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome to another voice recovery stream. Um, so, <coughs> like last time, I'm going to try to shoot for an hour, maybe a little more, depending on my voice is feeling. <clears throat> so, uh, good to see everybody. Hello, King Kirby and Nicholas. Um, so we're just going to kind of be chilling in here today. Um, I thought that you guys would like me. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Some uh, playing some maybe copyrighted, maybe not copyrighted music. We're going to do some Jun Fukumachi today. And, uh, I'm letting you guys vote on which album of his. Well, there's two albums of his I'm going to play. One's going to be Jazz Fusion. One's going to be Synth. And it's essentially which one do you want me to do first um <clears throat> hello jacob uh so just go ahead and vote uh actually you guys have already been voting for a couple of minutes but uh maybe let me let one more vote go in there <coughs> as you can hear um still got some bits of phlegm i'm trying to get out copyrights for nerds yeah so one of the albums i'm gonna play it's the one that's actually in the corner right now, his Spiral Steps album. I didn't get flagged for that uh, yesterday when I streamed, uh, but I did get flagged for the Jocko Pastorius album, so we're not going to be doing that. Um, one. But uh, let's see. Well, it looks like we have a winner here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it. All right, so Jazz Fusion. We'll do spiral steps first. Hold on. All right, let me just pull it up. And of course, let me know if it's too loud. All right, from the top. Okay. Um. See here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, trying to pull it up. Here we go, in the holiday groove. So we're gonna try without the power-ups. We're not gonna be doing the rune thing. Uh, I already got, I got that achievement um, off screen. So, uh, oh wait, no, whoops. So we're going to try to see how far we can get without any power-ups that actually help me. So greed is, dang it, refund the power-ups, there we go, only greed. There we go. Yeah, um, greed doesn't help you during the game as I said before. So we're going to try to get to the 30 minute mark once more. Um, and so because we're not trying to use stuff that's maybe sub-optimal, like, uh, like, uh, freaking um, Rune Tracer, uh, we should hopefully do better. Freaking hell. Hmm. Clock Lancet, I don't really use that one too much, but it is interesting. I... Alright, oh boy, this is bad. Oh, these, wow, bad rolls. Bad rolls. Look, see, this axe doesn't even drop them. You know what? We're re-rolling this. Take me out. <laughs> Let's try this again. Really would like like the King Bible. Fire Wand could be good. Alright, 
King Bible and Fire Wand. Looking good so far. Where'd the music go? Wait, where'd the music go? Play, what the heck was that? Not a huge fan of any of these. I guess Clover. Gotta get lucky, baby. So, uh, <clears throat> I was trying to think about stuff to talk about um, during the stream. Since we're just kind of chilling here today. So I thought it would be fun to, uh, to do the, uh, whoops. Hey, Jake. Oh, shoot, yeah. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I forgot to <coughs> actually end the poll, my bad. Hold on here. Candle Labrador. You know what, We're, we actually are going to use the Rune Tracer. It's not that bad of a, an ability. I want Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod I think will be crucial. It's so freaking good. Fuck me. Oh, I screwed that up. <sighs> what, what am I saying? I've already got Lightning Rod. What am I saying? Um, not Lightning Rod. Uh, Magic Wand. Magic Wand might be halfway decent for me right now. Um, it's, uh... Anyway, I thought it would be interesting to, um, not interesting, but I know, I know some of you, um, maybe have been in streams where I've talked about how I was going to, uh, play D&D for the first time. Well, I did end up finally starting doing that in, uh, January, D&D being Dungeons & Dragons, for those of you who don't know. And, uh... Yeah, apparently I'm somebody who's a little bit of a minority in uh, society in terms of not being somebody who had played D and D before. It's because it's nerd shit. Uh, uh oh yeah, for, for I got oh I screwed up. I screwed up. I thought that I wouldn't be able to walk on the table for some stupid reason. Let's try that again. You know what? Here's what we need to do. We, yeah, let's do something else. Let's go back to roots. I, I, I'm like trying to. I'm trying to be like a major league gamer here. I'm trying to meta bullshit. No, return to return to our roots here. Uh, no, I didn't like those rolls. Bad first rolls. Give me like a good first ability. Give me maybe King Bible or Lightning Ring. You know, Lightning Ring. Let's take it. Let's go. All right, this is the run. First serious. This is the one. Um, so, yeah, I ended up starting um, back in January. I think we're like eight sessions in now, me and my friends. Uh, whoop. And we're, uh, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. So my, my character that I'm playing is... Uh, I'm a tiefling, but not just any tiefling. I'll talk about it later. But I'm a, tif I'm a tiefling who's uh, part sorcerer, part um, warlock. So that's like spellcaster stuff, which is my understanding is not the way you're supposed to go on your first run. But um, for convenience sake, we've all been playing through the roll d20 thing. So like the computer takes care of most of this stuff. I think we might do crown here. Although armor could be good later with the uh, mixed with rune tracer. Garlic's not super great on this particular map. 
Multi-classing is also not great for the first run. Ouch. Yeah, well, I ended up doing it. I actually originally wanted to be a Dragonborn, not a Tiefling. Um, but I was explaining the concept and the backstory of my character, because if I was going to do D&D, role-playing was going to be the number one priority. I didn't want to be somebody who was a min-maxer. So I was explaining my character, and long story short, I wanted to have a lot of, uh, I'm just mixing, I'm mixing myself a drink for my throat here. I wanted to have a lot of fire usage in my um, background, or like in, in, that I was going to use. So I was going to do a Dragonborn, because you know Dragonborns can breathe fire. Um, but my friend who is the, the dungeon master, he was doing some research. And he ends up basically finding out, like, if you want to manipulate fire, it's actually better for you to have only a little bit of dragon blood than actually be a dragon. It's kind of strange, I know, but that's apparently how D&D works. So I can't breathe fire, but I can shoot it out of my hands, and I can shoot it through my weapons and whatnot. Oh yeah, spoon clanking ASMR. You all are here for it. Um, so... So my character ended up being a draconic sorcerer and a warlock. So here's the backstory for it, and I know some, some of my friends who I play D&D with, they pop in to watch the channel, they lurk. They're lurkers. So I won't, I won't give everything away for those of you who don't know it. But uh, basically the concept of my character is that um, she, and it's a she, uh, is a draconic tiefling. And um, the idea is, uh, this is kind of a little bit based on the poppy war. We're gonna do crown. We're doing crown. Um, is uh, that the draconic tieflings were like a mercenary army, a, a racially based um, mercenary army. Because uh, they all had dragon blood in them, and they also had the benefits of being tieflings. And they would hire themselves out in in uh to to you know other nations uh for usage in war but also like i kind of as the game has gone on i've like expanded the background lore more because it's like what if it's like not even just traditional warriors like you know you go get a you go get like a draconic tiefling rogue when you want to assassinate somebody but you want to really make it hurt so it's like Look, I don't want you to just break into, you know, the guy whose land I'm trying to steal. I don't I don't want you to just break into his house and kill him. I want you to kill him using uh, the, the infestation uh, spell so that he gets eaten alive by bugs, too, on the way. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, and there's like some oh, other details to the uh, to the backstory, but <laughs> that's that's the gist of it. Anyway, um... Fuck. Uh... Uh, basically, in, in typical D&D &D fa fashion, as is my understanding, um, my family was all killed. Uh, and not just my family, but like my whole tribe. So I am the last draconic tiefling on Earth, or the planet, or whatever the heck D&D &D takes place in. Um, oh, this thing's gonna drop me. Yep. Damn! Why am I so good at this game off-screen, but not on-screen? Like, seriously, I have almost all the achievements. Um, so, um, I get some of my magical powers from, I guess we're, you know, let's do, let's do Pichone. Oh god, this sucks. Oh, there goes half my health. Fuck me. Um, <clears throat> so, maybe I should do like Gennaro or something, but he's got shitty ass, uh, knives. <coughs> <coughs> Um, let's do let's do the panda. Um, so the premise, the premise um, of why my character is a warlock is she has a uh, an Arafet, I think it's called, like a specific type of demon genie. Uh, who, you know, he, he gives her power, and in return, she does stuff for him. 
Um, which I won't. It's, uh, let's just. I don't know. Basically, I, it's like I give you power to burn shit, so you're gonna burn shit I want you to burn. That's the that's the long and short of it. Oh, nice! We got the double pigeons. Okay, we can get the rainbow bird, people. Um. So, yeah, we've been so so. That's that's uh that's the character I've been rocking. Uh let's do spellbinder. Um, that's the character I've been rocking. Uh, warlock slash sorcerer, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been having fun role playing, kind of coming up with the backgrounds of my story. It's been really. I'm playing with people who have all played before. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who's a first timer, so um, I'm kind of learning by observation from them. Uh, and, you know, good stuff. Well, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um. And uh, the game that we're playing is apparently like a, I don't know, I think they're called like pre-builds. <sighs> I think we gotta do Rune Tracer, I need, I need something a little more, you know, get out my fucking way. Ah, Panda's too slow! Oh god, I'm so fucked. Wait, there we go, yeah, those cluster bombs. Yeah, my shit is not exactly accurate. Yeah, it's like I just went right through that thing. Nothing broke. Nothing. Oh, 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 go oh, fuck yourself. Alright. One more time with the panda, and then we're doing the upgrades. I swear I've beaten this game. Obviously, I had to have beaten this game without power-ups. That's why I've gotten a lot of these unlocks. But just go fuck yourselves. Um, but yeah, we're playing, uh, uh, this, like, pre-built campaign called Curse of Strahd. So, the premise of the story is that, um, we were, we were, like, doing a mission in the woods. We all started at level 3, by the way. And then, uh, we went into some fog, and then, uh, when we came out, we were in this kingdom called Barovia um, <clears throat> it's very a lot of it is like very kind of Eastern European um, Russian in, in flavoring there's some German in there yeah I'd say like Berlin to Moscow those areas uh, but the <clears throat> you you get there and you you're in this like locked off dimension of a country in this forest um, with some valleys in it called Barovia and um, the land uh, is ruled over by a count called uh, Strahd and he um, he's the one who's trapping you in the in the no, shouldn't have done that yeah because I get to tell him later <coughs> fuck it we're getting upgrades I don't I'm trash I guess Maybe it's because I'm talking, it's like drinking and driving, right? There we go. So we're upgrading cooldown, a little bit of health, the damage, lux up, vanish, duplicator's key. Okay. Let's try this shit again, shall we? Um, and yeah, so, so the Count is like this immortal vampire who, uh, is controlling the city or the country and we have to kill him if we're ever going to get out. Um, now there's like side missions along the way, but that seems to be the primary goal. Mm. But it's, it's going to take a while. We hit level four, like one session ago 
And I was trying to think about what upgrades I wanted to give my character, so I asked the DM, personally, like, hey, are we going to level up again before we finish the game? And he said, dude, the game recommends you don't face the final boss till you're at least level 10. We're going to be here. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, let's see here. But uh, I, my Warlock, I ended up doing Pact of the Tome when I hit level 4 overall and level 3 on my Warlock. So the Pact of the Tome is basically I got a book that gives me extra cantrips, so cantrips are free spells. Um, so I just know all the things. All of the not super powerful things, but a lot of like little things. Okay, here's what I would like. I'd like the other pigeon. I would like, um, what would I like? Yeah, I think it'd be good to get the other pigeon. King Bible and maybe Pentagram. What's cool about when you can manage to pull off the double pigeon is, um, It'll then open up a slot for you, another weapon slot. <coughs> so it's almost like you have seven weapons. Fire, yeah, fire one would be pretty good. It yeah, may be King Bible, Pigeon, Fire one. Have I ever played EU4? Yeah, I did. Like, admittedly, it's been years now, but I really tried to get into EU4, but it just never clicked for me. By which I mean, there we go, there's Fire 1. When I say it didn't click for me, I'm talking about, like, on an enjoyment level. I did understand how to do that. I would, I did do several games in my personal time. Like, I knew how to colonize, I knew how to fight wars and do things with the economy and whatnot, but. I don't know how to describe it. It just, it just, uh, it just didn't. There was no click moment with me in that game where I went, "Oh, I want to play this over and over and over again." <clears throat> and now there's been so many DLCs since then. Uh, gosh, it would, it would cost a lot of money to try to get back into it. I guess I, didn't really, I should oh I should have used freaking banish I sped that up but that was a mistake so if I can get the infinite wand that's pretty good too so you guys follow the fire the evening tenebrae um but it was kind of fun. I, I was I was joking about this with my DM the other day. Uh, how um, so so there was a, a we we did a we did a thing in the last session we did of D and D, where um, we played a game and it's from one of the Critical Role campaigns. Critical Role was like is like this huge D and D um, Twitch. Well, no, it's on YouTube too. But yeah, there are these like Dungeons and Dragons streamers that have a lot of. Uh, voice actors in them um like the voice actors who were um lust and roy mustang and full metal alchemist they're uh they're in the in the crew anyway so uh there was a drinking game they did for like you know super quick role play this is called what the fuck is up with that where Whenever you get a chance at the bar, you can just do a drinking game and you, you roll dice and whoever rolls the highest number gets to ask a question of the party member with the lowest number. So it's a way to kind of get to know each other quickly, our characters. So <laughs> we were playing it and uh, I should note that I am the only woman in the in my D&D party, like my character being a woman that is. Um, other than that, it's a real sausage fest. Um, and... Uh, I was getting asked about my background 
And uh, so my character's drunk. It's halfway entertaining. I'm not too funny in an overly long series. Oh, Critical Role. Yeah, yeah, like... When one was telling me they did a series, like, they're, they're, they'll do, like, you know, three-hour streams or whatever, and they're like, yeah, one of them's like, it's like an 80-part series. It's like, Jesus. I play fucking grand strategy games, and I find that ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, if you're getting entertained along the way, obviously they're successful. Actually, I think one of them was telling me that they are the most successful group on, um, on, uh, Twitch. Like, in terms of monetary income in like the year, yeah, I think it was like in 2021 they were the most successful one or some shit like that. Anyway, I am the, yeah, I'm the only woman in the group. So my character's drunk and we're talking the backstory about being a draconic tiefling and I cast a uh, thaumaturgy which lets me change my, the appearances of my eyes. So I change my eye color to, um, or my eyes to look like dragon eyes with like the scales uh, out and whatnot, scales around them or whatnot. And uh, one of our characters is uh, he's dragonborn, so I look more like a dragon now because what I did to my eyes. And he goes, "Is it okay that I have an erection?" And uh, afterwards, I was joking about it, saying, "You know, I'm really proud of our group because uh, like we're all dudes in real life, and I'm playing the only woman." And, uh, it took until the 8th session for somebody to make a sex joke at my character. <laughs> and then it was even a little complimentary. <coughs> it's like, ooh, she looks more like one of mine now. <coughs> uh, let's see what we want to use here. I think we'll do lightning ring, because I, I can get empty tone later. All right, you see, we're start we're starting to cook with some gas now. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're picking it up. Her saliva was mercury. Oh goodness, sounds pretty hardcore. Sexy, she was not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we got, it's a pretty diverse group. I think there's only one human. Because there's me, I'm the tiefling. Our bard is a human. Um, we've got a, we've got a, oh gosh, what are they called? The cat people. He's a monk. So like, his dexterity is just through the goddamn roof. Because he's got, like, the cat-like reflexes and he's a monk. Like, we'll roll for initiative, and he won't even roll a nat 20, and he'll have, like, a 24 or some shit. Uh, because of his, uh, augmentations from race and class. Everybody, nobody else will have, like, higher than a 16, maybe. Um, let's see, we've got, a. I think they're called a Furbolg. I think, yeah, I think they're called Furbolgs. Um... Uh, uh, who's our, uh, cleric, and, the uh, dragonborn paladin. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty diverse group, I think. <coughs> I'm gonna try to prioritize upgrading the birds so that they can eventually fuse, and then I can get space for another, uh, weapon. Because I, I think a King James Bible could definitely get me to the end here. Here we go. Suicide bombers. But it's also kind of funny because like, I was told when, uh, you know, that, oh, you're going to make a tiefling character? Tiefling characters get shit wherever they go because... They're demons, so like every almost every NPC is gonna inherently not like you because you're a tiefling. But we're playing, uh, we're playing. Well, then we end up playing a campaign <coughs> where it's like this isolated kingdom, and everybody's human, so everybody's just looking at the whole party like we're a freak show, which I suppose we are. Yeah, I'm gonna start making my way over to those tomes in the west. Uh, just so we can pick them up eventually. Oh, uh, here's the one synth track on this album. Oh, 
my gosh, I totally forgot one. Yeah, and we have a hobgoblin. He's our, um, what are they called? Artificers. He's, uh, we're still kind of trying to figure him out, his character. Like, we know the guy, but, you know, like, his character out. We're, we're trying to, we're trying to figure out what's going on there. Because, like, he built, he's got, like, a machine thing that he, he carries around, and he's, like, really, really obsessive about shit. Frankly, I think it's because the guy playing him is trying to min-max too much. Um, so he just makes not really, he just makes weird decisions. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I forgot about my uh, our hobgoblin friends. Because I don't really know what hobgoblins are that well. Okay, lightning ring. So we can get that maxed out now. Maybe when we kill this thing. Oh, there. Speaking of, let's see. Can we get it? Can we get it right away? Now, nah, or wait, did we roll it? I think I saw the scythe. We might get the upgrade right now. Maybe. No. Nope. Dark sight. One thousand. Your sound healthier. Yes. Thank you. Getting a little better each day. Most tieflings are the one I played. She was born from human crusaders who happen to be exposed to too much abysmal radiation. The Crusaders didn't find out such things exist until the newborns were coming out as abominations of one type or another. Oh, goodness. Bad news. Hobgoblins are goblins if they were good at melee. <laughs> um, that was the honey. Don't make jokes. In other words, orcs if they were less stupid. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty smart guy, and he uses Firebolt like me, so we're cool. It's actually really funny because we've had two incidences where we, and I'm sure that it like, I'm sure it's not the DM's decision what attacks us. I'm sure he has like a chart that he has to randomize off of, but we've twice been going through the woods and been attacked by like tree people, and like I am just, I am as made up as fire as you can be without actually being a fire elemental. And our hobgoblins and artificer that also knows Firebolt too. So, so just worst mistakes of their soon to be over lives when those tree people attack us. Oh shit. <coughs> Time for the spoon ASMR again. Um. Oh, this is kind of funny, and it's because I don't, I, I just kind of have given up doing a woman's voice for my character. I just do like this cockney accent. I just say, convert it to a woman in your mind, but I have been misgendered by my uh, party mates twice. <laughs> wow, that was some good lightning. Did y'all see that? Spinach, nice, been needing this. I'm not needing it, but Yeah, the, the fire wand is so good here because it, it shoots out randomly, but if you can get the fire wand to like shoot perfectly to the left or right, you can just and once it's evolved especially, you can just follow it and it'll keep clearing the path of enemies for you. It's amazing. Gender bin CHG, yeah, exactly. Alright, All right, 15 seconds, we got a big wave coming. So yeah, let's get the uh let's get that damage up. Four, three, two. One, here they come. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to grab that food. Oh, this ain't even that bad. There we go. 
Alright, how far away are we from these cool offs? Alright, so we got two more uh, slots to spill before we can go grab those tomes. But uh, it's gonna be real good for us. Oh, here we go. Come on, lightning upgrade! Oh, the dopamine! Dopamine it, dopamine in my skin. Oh, Mad Beast Yeti. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. So we, it looks like we're gonna get the Thunder Loop. So we get the Evolved Lightning. We're gonna be doing so much damage. And then the Spinach and the, uh, the Wand will be upgraded as well. Wonderful. Yeah, that's it. I am now, uh, yeah, I am now dead. <clears throat> I got some water here. Keep only getting the ebony roll. Uh, ebony wings upgrade. Oops. This part, this part always kind of messes with me. I'm bouncing around. It's like some of them are seeking you out, but the others are bouncing like it's a game of ass. Not asteroids, but you know what I mean. When you think about it, that's all this is. It's just asteroids with extra steps. Oh, bob and weave, bob and weave. You gonna get back on shit, Mad Beast Yeti? Gotta pack your copy of Moby Dick. <laughs> That's it, Ebony Wings finally completely upgraded. Oh, it's a, ooh, it's a bat. Gonna wreck this bat. <laughs> wow, this bat's hanging on, isn't it? Okay, tough guy. Oh my gosh! Let's go! Oh, all the upgrades. Three fire wand upgrades, a rune tracer, and a wand. Just, yeah, all, all of it, all of it. And there we go, Magic Wand is now upgraded as well. <coughs> you see, I have trouble when things actually get close to me. The only thing that's really pushing stuff away from me is the uh, the magic wand. My damage should be maxed out now. All right, so now we are going to switch to the Buddy Sanders voice for a little bit. I find that it's actually easier. My throat. Back. Maybe. It's just how I should talk. My friends. My family. We're gonna be a little confused. I'm gonna say, hey, listen. My throat appreciates this. You want me to be healthy? You want me to feel good for a long amount of time? Then this is what we're gonna have to live with. <laughs> is uh, your son, your friend, your brother, uh, your nephew has uh, now become a uh, buddy sentence. No, whether I like him or not is irrelevant. It's, uh, this is about having a uh, working class Brooklyn accent, which for some reason is actually very easy on the top. Uh, speak of D&D, you're enjoying uh, Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. Is that some sort of D&D uh, campaign? You must remember, I don't actually uh, know a whole lot about it. This is my first time. Uh, it has been fun though. Uh, the combat. But interesting, the learning mechanics. For example, uh, we've got this fight. I was casting a lot of fire. 
I was trying to spread the fire, so I was uh, using, I was setting fire to wood, and I would have to roll nature checks to do it. But uh, I checked on uh, the, the, the rules the week afterwards, and uh, I ended up having to be the one to explain to my uh, more estimable, estimable, and um, <laughs> my more es estimable and uh, experienced colleagues that uh, if you cast fire on a on a five x five cube. And there is wood or some other sort of fuel adjacent to it that also will catch fire. And that is how the fire can spread. Now, you can argue in the courts, in the legal system, uh, through our democratic process, uh, what uh, what constitutes fuel. But uh, the word wood was already expressly used. So therefore, wood is uh, without a doubt, um, without a doubt, going to be set aflame and I have a backpack full of wood we're going to be making firewalls on the battlefield it's going to be good positional control uh hags are going to burn themselves trying to get to my ass I'm going to laugh at them and I'm going to throw fire bolts while they're on the fire so they're on fire while they're on fire this is what the American people are asking for <laughs> okay <coughs> we're going to switch up with a June Fukumachi album now uh, now, the first time that I listened to uh, June, June Fukumachi, great, uh, great uh, terrific uh, jazz fusion musician from Japan, wonderful place, never been, but I've heard. Um, so he, uh, oh my god, oh, j j just a quick side so sidebar, sidebar here, I, uh, I put out a community post today, you should go check it out, you should go vote in the poll, and I made a joke, but the end of the joke was where I would turn 360 degrees, and then I walked away from a situation and they're telling me if you turned 360 degrees you were facing exactly where you were they think that means because I was facing the situation I would not be able to turn 360 degrees and then walk away uh, this tells me that this new generation is uh, not grown with the uh, the music of Michael Jackson they're not aware of the moonwalk they never practiced it in their in their hallways growing up as, as, as children and uh so the, the, these children have been deprived and therefore don't know what turning 360 degrees and walking away means <laughs> oh jesus i'm silly i don't hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> all right um Anyway, this this June Fukumachi hell. The first time, the first time that I listened to uh, June Fukumachi, I was listening to Cassiopeia. Now Cassiopeia is a jazz fusion band uh, from Japan as well. Like I said, wonderful nation. Jazz continue to stay relevant out there. And um, <laughs> and uh, I was oh my gosh, we're just getting all these upgrades. Hold on. Uh, ooh, we have to last one uh luckier i think i'm already feeling lucky let's go with the luck luck oh my gosh oh my goodness get fire once so i can get that upgrade holy crap that was some gem Oh man, go go CHG! <coughs> so, <coughs> anyway, so it's June Fukumachi fella. I was listening to Mint Jams by uh, by Cassiopeia, terrific, terrific jazz fusion album. Very high energy, very funky. Get your, get your back up off the wall, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, so like I said, you like Cassiopeia, you check out June Fukumachi. And, and I listened, I pulled, I, I typed in uh, Jun Fukubachi albums, and I clicked on the first one that I saw. It was this one called uh, Starview. Now Starview, it's a terrific, terrific album. But I will say this, the American people, they, they, they need to know it. This does not sound anything like Cassiopeia. Spiral Steps album sounds like Cassiopeia. Parts of Dirac, like Minority, sounds like Cassiopeia. But, again, I want to be perfectly clear. Starview HCT 5808 does not sound like Cassiopeia. Having said that, we're just going to throw this on here. Uh, we're not going to finish this album today. But it's an interesting album. It's just like a, an amazing exploration of synth, although there is an acoustic um, track on here. 
But, uh, yeah, really, really good synth. Some of it's scary, some of it's fun and happy, some of it's sad, some of it's triumphant, you know? Uh, here we go. Anyway. <coughs> One more spoon clankage. So I guess I'm going to go back to telling, I guess, some, maybe some funny uh, D&D stories. We're just beelining I mean, for the uh, those 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 uh, tomes to our west now, by the way. Just, uh, that is, that is all that's on our mind. But, God, you see how close they can get to me? That's why I need the King Bible. Really gotta get it. Oh, freaking hell yeah. 15 minute mark produces here. Uh, it's gonna be a big, big wave coming, big wave coming. Um, sometimes I'd be thinking, see, she's played too many map painting games. He's going crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I wanted to tell, like, uh, maybe some funny, funny stories that have happened in my campaign. Um, I have to try to think of a think of a specific, specific one that doesn't require like a ton of context or anything like that. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh yeah. So my character was an urchin, you know. Just she's she's done her time out on the street, uh, lost her family, so she's an orphan. And um, there was a part in the game we're playing where uh, we rescued some kids from these hags that were gonna eat them. Uh, bake them into pies, you know, Hansel and Gretel shit. Uh, map painting is like watching paint dry if the paint whispered of conspiracies. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Um, nice, we got the, yeah, the, the rainbow wings that they're called. One, show, show the description again. Yeah, so our birds are going to fuse now and then we can get an extra item so I can get the King Bible. King James Bible. Come on, show the thing again. Okay, it's not gonna show the thing again, but yeah, now we're just Yeehaw! Um King Bible right away, hell yeah. Um uh, So we we, re we rescued these orphans from uh, these hags. Well, they're not orphans actually. They told us that um they had parents, but their parents had sold them to the hags. Uh, so, like, for money. So they didn't want to go back home. So we just kept them with us until we uh, went to a uh, new town. And then we... Here we go. And then we just looked for a new... Uh, we looked for an orphanage. Um, we gave them to the father there. We did some insight checks. He, he you know, completely actually nice dude maybe the only completely nice dude in the fucking country um so we're on our way now he was offering to pay us money for having saved these children which we said no that's ridiculous like we did it anyway all right so rune tracer explodes when bouncing in retaliation speaking of dnd explosion um so <laughs> oh, excuse me um so we were on the way out and I told, I said, I, I said to the dungeon master, I, like, I want to do a, a sleight of hand thing. Is that a, that's like, is it like, I need to do a deception roll, right? He goes, yeah. And like, I'm pretty good at that. My, my stats. I roll like absolute shit. And uh, so even after my modifiers, I only rolled like a 10. Uh, and what I was trying to do, because he had offered to give us 20 gold, I decided on the way out I was going to give him 20 gold secretly. Like, put it in the, uh, put it in the chest. And I think that, like, some members of my party had put money in there already, but it was just, like, a couple of gold. Like, maybe five gold most. And I was going to put 20 in there. But I wanted to be sneaky about it. I, I didn't, you know, it's not, it's not charity if you're boasting about it in front of everybody, right? But also, I just didn't want him to see that side of my character. I fucking, yeah, I roll like a 10. So 
I must have like stumbled over and hit my face into the fucking metal box or whatever and then clang 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 you know uh, <coughs> and so everybody in the party saw me do it except for one guy which like we kind of just uh, figured it as like oh he was the first one out the door so he, he didn't hear it all but like and uh and you know one of our characters the furbolg the cow man he, he's like this really sweet nice guy and he just smiles at me and gives a thumbs up like oh look at you and i just said ah oh, god damn it and i said that's it because of my shit roll and i said and that's in character too yeah my character is going son of a bitch that you all saw her do that Missed business opportunity, save the kids, loot the money, return them to their parents, wait for them to sell the kids to somebody else, rinse, repeat. Oh, you mean loot the money from the parents or something? I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, think, uh, I don't think our cleric, the Furbolg, would be down with that. Fucking hell, the hobgoblin in my party was talking about um, robbing the orphanage later, and then I was going, <coughs> you know, my character, my character didn't hear that, but I was saying, <coughs> but like out of character, I said, why the fuck would you do that when my character? I guess I should say my character's name, Gala. Um, that's short for something else, but anyway, uh, it's like, why would you do that when my character just gave money to the place? Like, why would you fucking rob the orphanage and they're making some bullshit excuses? It's because he, our hobgoblin, seems to just be immoral and not give a shit about anything. But he said, look, my character doesn't know you're planning this, but you better hope she never fucking finds out. And I was just like, but even, but again, like in a meta, out of character way, I was just like, why would you rob the orphanage? Isn't the orphanage going to be the poorest fucking place in town? Why don't you rob a business? Why don't you rob some rich noble asshole? Why the orphanage? It's not even close to where we are! We're on the other part of town now! Yeah, chaotic stupid, yeah. Okay, now, yeah, we're getting all the nice shit. Now we got the meteors about to shoot out. Yeah, these are so fucking strong. Here we go! Here we go! Oh yeah, we're just, the momentum's all on our side now. But anyway, I don't think they're going to do it. It doesn't sound like anybody else in the party wants to help them with it. And actually, we have bigger problems because, uh, so... The plan that my party is doing right now, and again, this is in Curse of Strahd, so if any of you have ever played it before, you might know what I'm talking about in a little more detail. But, uh, we're fighting, we know we're going to fight vampires, and we've also been running into a lot of werewolves. So when we were in the first town, uh, we got an offer, we got told like, you know, if you're gonna be fighting werewolves, you really should silver your weapons, you know, so then we can get a damage bonus on them. Now I decided not to do it for two reasons. Um, because number one, uh, I'm a spellcaster. I should only be fighting in melee as a last resort. And uh, number two, I figured that my character would want to save the money and use it on something else. <coughs> so, we were, uh, oh, look at the little green demon in the hat. Oh, there's the cooldown thing. Let me get in there. All right. Now we start making our way all the way east again. Pick up all this shit. Um, so, we, we later on had a fight against some werewolves and the bonuses weren't working or like it felt like we weren't rolling right and eventually one of my, the characters did like an insight check or whatever you call it uh fake silver uh they got fucking robbed by the uh the blacksmith or whatever what's this i had a true neutral rogue fighter who's a former robber she had true moments of compassion she gave a reward to a former co-worker who didn't have money to buy sons off of enslavement she also consoled a boy for the trauma of watching his dad get killed by a goblin. Ooh, that's rough, buddy. So, you know, my character's like, that's what you get, you bastards. These people are crooks. Can't trust anybody in this country. That's why I'm just trying to kill the vampire and get the fuck out of here. <coughs> uh, but but anyway, so, so we, we're in a new town now, and my party figured, okay, 
We need to actually get our weapons silvered. We need those damage bonus, so let, like, let's try to find somebody who will do it for us. And we're gonna check the work while we're in the shop this time to make sure there's actual fucking silver. <laughs> and not, I don't know, ground up aluminum or something. There we go, unholy vespers. Bibles go. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in a good spot now. Real good spot. Yes. Yes. The Vandalia is getting upgraded. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We we've got this, folks. Wow. Did you guys kill the scam blacksmith? Well, we just found out we found out while we were like two actually kind of three villages away. So to kill the scamming blacksmith, we have to go all the way back to the east. Now I've got a reason I want to go all the way back out there. Um, but if anybody wants to do it, so it might not be too hard to convince everybody. Cause it's like, you know, I could just say, Hey, we can also kill that guy who scammed you. Um, so, so yeah, we're in the new place. It says like, look, we need to go find, uh, we need to go find some, some silver weapons. Now I, my argument I was making was like, why do we need to fucking, like, not everybody needs to silver their weapons. I'm still not going to silver my freaking weapons. And you know what? <clears throat> you guys are paying too much money back there, and you got scammed. The real thing probably costs more. So I decided I was not going to do it. So we kind of had like a party split up moment where everybody was doing different things. So like our artificer was working on a ritual. Our bard went to go take a bath. Um... Uh, and the rest of the party went to go, um, silver their weapons. And <laughs> so I said, okay. And then, you know, like the DM was going through everybody, like, what's everybody doing? What's everybody doing? It's like, cause we got to kill an hour for this ritual. And I said, everybody's going to go silver their weapons, right? And they're like, well, I'm not going to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. So I, I go to the bartender at the place we're saying, Hey, pitch notes. You just saw my Yunnan playthrough from four years ago. <laughs> Which one? The one I did in Vanilla or the one I did in uh, Kaiserreich? I like them both. Those are both among my favorite campaigns. China's such a fun place to play in. Um, so I was... Excuse me. You know, that stone mask is really far away. We need to start beelining. I don't have time to do this zigzag shit. Um... <coughs> But I was up. Uh, where'd the music go? Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is track three. Let's go turn it up a little bit. Um, so I I go to the bartender that we're at, and it's like, okay, everybody's meeting back here in an hour, right? And I go to the bartender. I don't tell the rest of the party this. And I'm paraphrasing a lot of the, uh, like all the dialogue here, but I basically am asking who are the richest people in town? And so I get told, um, like the, there's like a baron and a noble woman. It's like, yeah, they, they're here and here respectively. And went, okay, got it. And so I grab my thieves kit, which I've had on me this whole time. And I'm gonna decide I'm gonna go rob them. Now here was my intention. I was gonna rob them. And then, uh, nice this is what happens when you max out your luck. Um, I decided that I was, yeah, gonna go rob them. And then when these guys came back from uh, shopping for silvered weapons, I would give them however much money. Like, I didn't know how much money a rich person would have, but I'm sure they would have enough that they could pay for some silvered weapons. I would then uh, pay it. To oh, I just realized I didn't change the album cover. Give me a second. Oops, hold on. I would then, you know, say like, look, let's say I stole, I don't know, 200 gold or whatever the fuck. I don't know how money scales in D&D. In &D. But then they come back and like, oh yeah, we have to spend like 30 gold each to uh, to silver our weapons or something. And I just like whip it out and go, here you guys go. It's on me. I just thought it would be a nice thing to do. <laughs> um, oh, I'm trying to this album up uh but the it goes completely tits up 
I don't just say that because I was playing a woman. Uh, hold on, let me change this album. I just had a really good idea uh, for something fun and silly I could do. <laughs> so my character is always in the middle of the screen, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> Behold my power! <laughs> Let's make it a little smaller. Yes, the power! <laughs> 30 gold is a sum a peasant will never see in his entire life. Yeah, you know, there you go. <laughs> well, the point is. That I was just gonna, you know, rob a bunch of money, not for myself, but for the party, to pay for their stupid little silvered weapons. Um, so, the game plan was, I was gonna try to sneak into the mansion, you know, get ideally getting the owner of the mansion out, and um, <clears throat> then, you know, run in there and just, you know, run through the place, try to find something. See, what, see where the cash is at. So, I cast the disguise on myself, because I have, like, those abilities. Um, change my voice, change my appearance and whatnot, and, uh, you know, so it's like, they're not gonna know that it was me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get these fuckers to leave, but I am rolling like dog shit. Um, just, yeah, horrible, horrible rolls on deception and whatnot. And so, long story short, the, it's it's like I'm in a room, <coughs> sort of in a room, like I'm at the bottom of a mansion, and apparently the mansion has like <coughs> a couple of stories, like there's two, three stories of it or something. And the and the baron of the mansion is like talking down to me from the third floor. Like I tried to use magic to do to distract him. He was able to see through it. Um and he's got like these like big mastiffs, which I'm sure he's gonna sick on me. Uh, so like I'm in total fucking desperation mode. There was a point where my party actually walked by the mansion while the door was open and they could have looked in and seen me. They failed on the perception rolls. Damn, look, just look how the freaking fireballs fucking cut through them like a hot knife through butter. It's awesome. Um, and, uh... And so like, I am just completely screwed. I've got no out here. I'm I'm just like digging through my um <coughs> my 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 spell list, my cantrip list, everything that I own and like on my person. Like, is there anything that could get me through this? Oh, this is this is a pretty groovy track. And uh, eventually I decide, well, they don't know what I really look like, so it might be time to say fuck it. But he's up on the third floor. I can't just like set him on fire. I can't reach him. Not that way anyway. So I decided to burn a second level spell that I have called Shatter. And uh, I just cast it at his feet. I don't do like a nat 20, but I finally do get a halfway decent roll. The fucking sound, imagine like, you know, the sound barrier being broken or something and like the shock wave coming off it or something. Oh fuck, got a little too close. There's a boss right there. I know, I know we're in bullet hell mode, but right above me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I end up getting a good, good roll, good damage roll. I vaporize his dogs, these big mastiffs. And he, and I blow up the stairs that he's at the top of, and he also goes running, uh, and like, he gets knocked back. He cracks his head, um, he might be dead, he's definitely unconscious. All right, here we go. I'll try to just cut through here. All right, there we got through the worst of it.
Um. So we're we're uh. So I then just fucking run into the mansion instead of out the door because also the guy's bodyguard. I managed to get him to leave, but then he was coming back, which is why I did the desperation thing. And uh, luckily the maid who was there, she didn't get hurt. I didn't want her to get hurt. She was just like an innocent bystander and all this. Um, cause the Baron's an asshole. Fucking deserved it. Yeah. I'm ah, damn right he deserved to die, and I hope he burns in hell. Uh, anyway, so uh, the. So I just like run into the mansion. I figured I'd gone through all this trouble. I just killed one of the richest men in the city. I'm at least gonna get some fucking money out of this. So I run into a room. I guess it was the worst fucking room to pick in the whole mansion. Um, Cause the only thing of value in there was some whiskey, some nice whiskey. It was just like a little den, a little drinking room. Getting all that money. Um. And then, uh, yeah, my character does hate the aristocracy because this is the first character that I ever had and, and my friends were telling me like, oh yeah, there's a thing that you can put in your roll d20 where it'll kind of give you predetermined personality traits so you can just kind of act to those traits and it'll like kind of be a nice little handicap the first time that you're, you're playing. You know, it's like golf, you know. Uh, it's like, you know, not, you know, you can have like a 10 handicap at golf because, you know, you're not Tiger Woods yet. Um... So one of my character's um, traits is, uh, I forget the exact wording, but it's something like all rich people should experience what it's like to live in the gutter. And, you know, I've turned that into like, you know, fuck all the rich people because I figured, you know, she's a, she's a, she, she was a street urchin. And I'm sure a lot of like rich people, you know, looked down on her, mistreated her or people she knew. So <laughs> anyway, um. So I just grab the whiskey, cause fuck it, it's the only thing of value, and I, ru I jump out the door. And uh, at this point, funnily enough, my, my party was coming back up the road. Uh, and so they just, they see me jumping out of a window of the mansion and falling on the, on the ground. Except they don't see that it's me, cause I'm still in disguise. <coughs> and then, uh, so the DM ended it there with the, the big bad bodyguard on our tail. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and you know, my, and like me and half, like, mo I'd say, yeah, two thirds of the party may be about to be dragged into a fight with what looks to be a pretty mean and nasty NPC. If you're hearing like an air conditioning or vacuuming sound, that's part of the album. I know it's weird. It's a little bit ambient. Two minutes to go, everybody. You know, here, let's, let's try to end this on a triumphant note. I'm going to go to one of my favorite tracks. This is a happy track. I used to think this track was sad, but I listened to it more and went, no, it's actually really nice. <clears throat> so, so yeah, the, the bodyguard of this Baron is like this enormous dude, and his whole right arm is like a demon arm. Uh, so it's... I guess like Winter Soldier, right? With his adamantium arm. Basically, I just he, I took one look at this big brawny guy. That's like, oh, this guy's gonna be a problem. If we have to fight him, and it looks like we we might. I might be able to, you know, turn off the disguise, and then he's not gonna know where I am, or who, you know, like where the fuck the other guy went. He might be busy with his dead boss. But we'll see what happens. We're just farming money now, but also, uh, yeah. Need has good hits. We never got to the stone mask. I started zigzagging again when I didn't need to. Dang it. Okay, plus I got started talking stories. 
it really is like drinking and driving. Um, you know, playing any of video game and streaming. I know I've done it for a while, but also my brain's just not been as sharp this week for obvious reasons. Well, yeah, all these 25s, this could have been getting, to, you know, 2.5 bonus this entire time. See, and here's the thing with the, yeah, I see, like, right there, the, the, the fireball is helping me punch through there a bit, but it's so RNG. 15 seconds! 15 seconds! 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Got it. And then Dev kills me. Got it. Got it. Told you I could do it. I'm a pro gamer. Major League gamer. Undisputed. All right. Look at that DPS on the Hellfire, 4.2, that was on the Fireballs. See, like I said, the Hellfire is so, so good on this, uh, on this level. Um, if you can, you just gotta follow them. And then what was second place? The Vandalier, yep, the, the birds, if you can get that fusion, so good. Third place was the Thunderloop, Thunderloop's always good. Something kills you at the half hour mark, yeah. I'm, I, I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be like representing that death is inevitable or whatever. Hey there, Throblo. <sighs> Booing me? Why? You just hating. Just, you know, bro, bro, I heard that everybody, chat, 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 I heard that Throblo can't even last 15 minutes in this game. Can't even last 15 anywhere else either. <laughs> but yeah, that, that Hellfire DPS. Damn good. Woo! All right, well, I think that's a pretty good spot to end the stream. Uh, let's see, if you kill the Grim Leaper, another will spawn. Hmm, interesting. Uh, <coughs> uh, but yeah, as you can see, like, the Pichon and the Ebony Wings, they basically don't do anything on their own. <laughs> Two minutes in heaven is better than one, yep. Yeah. All right, let me let me get some power ups here before I forget. Uh, that and I don't know. What is it, Caesar? Yeah, but that'll be it. I'm conquering history games. Thank you very much for joining me. You all have yourselves a pleasant day. <coughs> I'm gonna keep trying to. I'm not gonna stream tomorrow. I can't. I've got too many things I've got to do. But uh, tomorrow aside, I'm gonna try to keep doing some sort of short stream as my voice recovers just so y'all can check in on me by the way i don't know if y'all heard like i know i y'all know i like hollow live but um kanata that one japanese one who's uh she's her her gimmick is that she's like an angel um she's apparently announced that she's finally coming back which is really really great um uh because like she she had caught covid oh video of demonetized now because i said the bad word um, but it, like she was doing daily updates on her condition and she wasn't getting better and then it was hitting like day 25 and she still couldn't speak and she sounded awful and it's really bad because she's one of the best singers she ha they have and I just kind of went, I'm sure I wasn't the only one, I never said it out loud but it was one of those things I was just thinking, she's done, it's it, she's over, it's over. She got the, uh, there's a green tea IPA? No, I've not tried that, that sounds quite interesting. I haven't drank in the last week for obvious reasons. Um, but uh, she, uh, she, and I was just one of those people who was like, that's it, she's got long COVID. She's like, her career's over, that fucking sucks. Uh, but she announced that she's coming back and set a date for like mid April. But I don't even watch her, but I was really, I was really happy for her and her fans. It's like, yeah, that just seemed fucking awful. Um, anyway, uh, Hopefully, uh, my road to recovery is faster. I'm conquering history games. Y'all have yourselves a very pleasant evening and uh, good night, everybody. And Caesar says good night, too. That's what that meowing was. Bye.